Hey, Claire. Claire, come on. Where are you? I know you are receiving my texts. Come on, I have some interesting news. Dude, it's midnight and I am studying. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested in listening to your conspiracy theories right now. Rude. But why the hell are you still studying now? I don't think we have a test tomorrow. I am preparing for Yale, you jerk. Did you really forget about that? Hey, spare me the nagging. I'm sorry, but you see, I'm turning into an old man now, so it's hard to keep up with the youngsters. Do you plan on practicing for your next edition here? Because if that's what you're doing, then sorry. I have more important things to do. You are not a good friend. You know that, right? Then why are you back here? Go look for someone better then. Shoo! Shoo! Oh, but if I go, who's gonna take care of you? Do you have any other friends? Hmm? I can take care of myself, Gil. You don't need to tag along. Hmm. Still acting like a strong, independent woman who needs no help? Do you keep forgetting that I have seen you at your most vulnerable stages? Want me to tell your mother about the first time you went out on a blind date with Hank the Hunk? And how the ice queen of our school came crying back to her bestie? Ugh! Can you just stop coming up with these cringe titles? And yes, that experience made me realize I should never go out on blind dates. Haha, <laughs> you regret that decision so badly. Of course I do. Don't remind me of those delicacies he ordered. Who in their right mind eats mashed potatoes with chocolate syrup? Yikes. But no more talking about him. Just say what you were gonna say and leave me alone. Oh, so you are willing to listen now, huh? Trying to compensate, that's all. I know you won't stop pestering me even if I go offline. So yeah, come out and say it. Aren't you the sweetest human being on the planet? Thanks, Clay. Just spit it, Gil. Okay, okay. So do you know about the Edgar Brown case? Don't tell me you were again watching one of those crime documentaries and now you want to narrate the whole story to me. Hun, it's more than that, I swear. This is considered one of the most infamous disappearance cases in Texas of the last decade. Okay, and? And it's a case from Midland. Come on, have you never heard of it? You used to live there before, right? I'm sorry, but I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, wait, I will explain it to you. So, seven years ago, this 12-year-old boy called Edgar Brown disappeared from the town in complete daylight. Nobody knows where he went or what exactly happened that day. The crime rates back then were minimal than usual, but still, no suspects were ever found. His parents tried their best to find their boy, but sadly, the police closed the case due to a lack of evidence. There's a but coming, right? Exactly. But for some reason, the case is being opened again. Recently, an article about Edgar got recently viral, and under public pressure, police are going to investigate again. But there are no leads, right? How are they going to find him if there is no evidence or witness? There was one, apparently. A little girl who was with Edgar that day. I couldn't sleep the entire night after the conversation, and neither could I continue studying. The case Gil was talking about, I had never heard of it. Even though me and my mom used to live in Midland a few years ago, I don't have much recollection of the past. I just remember that I never liked living there. My mom is a single parent and, well, the town we used to live in was small and quite conservative. Not everybody was happily accepted with open arms. And my mom was constantly snarled at by our neighbors. She used to run a little grocery shop there, and the people of that town, well, they never treated her nicely. She still remained strong for both of our sake, told me that I should be forgiving and kind, but I guess I just couldn't. I was quite a hot-headed kid back then, and I remember yelling at a man who used to harass my mother at the shop. I think that's when we left town. I chose to keep my distance from people while mom was treated respectfully in her new job. Things were good now, and I plan on making our lives even better once I get the scholarship to Yale. But the story about the boy's disappearance never left my head. I am not someone who keeps up with the news, but for some unknown reason, I was a little reluctant to check it out. I decided to keep up with my studies, but curiosity soon got to me. After a few days, I decided to talk to my mother about this. Mom, you there? Yes, sweetie. What is it? Are you working right now? I am taking a break. What is it? You want to bring something on my way back? No, no, I just wanted to ask you about something. Can't it wait till I get back home? It's nothing big, though. Just something I heard of last week. Okay, what is it? Do you know about the Edgar Brown case? 
Mom, are you there? Who told you about it? Uh, Gail did? You know, he's a huge crime documentary nerd. I see. It was just another case from that freaky town, that's all. Don't think too much about it. Oh, okay. You study now. I'll be back by 7, okay? Okay, see ya. We never talked about that again, but it made me think my mother was hiding something from me. I also started to dream about strange things. Mind you, I am not someone who dreams a lot, let alone have such nightmares that would make me wake me screaming and crying. I would constantly see a man in a white shirt and black pants and a boy holding a little girl's hand as they are running away from the man. Their faces were never clear, but I could feel their fear and pain. The man would not stop chasing them, and the dream would end with the boy letting go of the girl's hand. The dread would no longer let me sleep. My schedule had started to fall apart, but I knew I needed to talk to someone about it, and so I did, with Gilbert. Hey, are you feeling okay now? Yeah, thanks for hearing me out today. I think I'm feeling a little better. Don't piss yourself too much, okay? And talk to your mom about this. I don't think she wants to talk about this. Why? I don't think she's the kind of mother who'd not understand her daughter's concerns. I know, it's not like that. But I think she knows something about the case. The case? You mean, about Edgar Brown? Yeah, I don't know what's going on anymore. Clay, do you have any recollection of that incident? Not really, no. I was too busy with myself, I guess. Honestly, that shitty down is not worth remembering. But it was on the news for almost two months. Didn't you live in the same area as the boy? I was eight, Gil. And I really don't understand why you're investigating me. My head's starting to hurt now. Listen, I don't want to force you, but I think you were involved in that case too. If you speak up, then maybe we'll get to know what happened to Edgar. What? Have you gone crazy? No way I know anything about it. The dreams, Clay, which you've been seeing lately. You sure your mind is just building up that scenes? That's his dreams work, man. But you're seeing them every night, ever since I told you about this. What if that conversation just unlocked a memory? There has to be a connection. Please stop watching those documentaries, I'm begging you. You're panicking, aren't you? Clay, you know this isn't like you at all. You know something's wrong. Have you seen the boy's picture? I don't wanna. Why? I told you already, I'm scared. It feels like if I do, I'll just recall something which won't be good. Who's the girl in your dream, Clay? I don't know. She's... She's what? Clay? Clay, you okay? I can't see her face, but she... She's wearing my favorite dress. That girl? Yeah, a floral red frock. Shit. Do you remember anything else? No. No, I can't remember. Okay. Okay, have you seen the picture of the boy? No. Mom told me not to. I'll send it to you. Is it okay? Okay. That's Edgar Brown. Clay, did you remember something? Claire! I think I was there. Where? I think something happened. Something bad that I don't want to remember. I saw something. Something wrong happened to him. Gil, I'm scared. What's happening to me? Calm down, Clay. Just, we will talk. I'm so sorry if this triggered any bad memories. Listen, we will talk tomorrow. But you need to talk to your mother first. Maybe this is way bigger than we expected. Okay. I always wondered why I could never remember my days in Midland. At first, I used to shrug it off thinking that place was better off forgotten. Nothing good ever happened there, and my memories, they were all over the place. But now, after seeing that boy's face, I couldn't help but try to recall my days there. The little incidents that happened, the prejudice that my mother and I had to suffer from. It was a mess, but I still tried. Why did we move to Stanford? Was it just because we were tired of living there? Or was there something more? I tried talking to my mom again about this, and this time, I was certain she was hiding something from me. She told me it was for the better if I just never remember the past. But why? I asked. Why am I not allowed to remember my memories? 
That conversation soon turned into an argument, as she started yelling that it's for the best. When I told her I would go to the police, she broke down in front of me, begging me that I never do that. The police will never find out what happened, she sobbed, clutching my arms. But if you reveal your identity to them, I will lose you forever. After calming down, she told me that she left the town because she was trying to protect me. The case was way more complicated than just the disappearance of the boy. From what she told me, some big drug lords were involved in this case. But because they have the power, no one was ready to step up. The girl was nowhere to be found and the cops were beating around the bush now. It's better if you forget about it, she suggested. And tell Gilbert not to dig too much into this. Hey Gil, did you get a call from my mom? Yeah. She told me not to talk about it with anyone. Hmm, I'm sorry. I understand. If drug lords are involved in this, then I think what she's doing is right. At least from her perspective. But that kid, what did he do? Where is he now? Did they kill him? Even the police doesn't seem to care anymore. Why is not justice being served to him? Hey, let's not talk about it, okay? Okay, but... Do you think we will get killed if we speak up? Maybe, but I don't want to die now. You don't need to. Gil, what are you thinking? Nothing. Go to sleep now, Clay. You're not planning on doing something crazy, right? Dummy. No. Are you still working on the article about this case? It's done, but I won't post it. Are you telling the truth? Why would I lie to you? I know you have a strong sense of justice, but this is more than that. This is dangerous, and I got you more involved in this mess. I introduced you to this mess, Clay. I should be the one apologizing. I still can't remember. My memories are so foggy. Then don't. It's fine. You did your best. Why does it feel like you're hiding something from me? I'm not, I promise. Don't leave me, please. I won't. Sleep now. You too. Night, Gil. Good night, Clay. Claire goes offline. I love you. That night, I had a dream again. The same one. But I saw myself. All grown up while the boy stared at me. Blood dripped down his abdomen, soaking his yellow bettles t-shirt. I was frozen, my nerves quivering. And then I looked down at my own hand. The scene switched and I was a kid again. I was crying while the boy yelled, run away. I look back and I see Gilbert. A dark shadow appeared behind him and I called out for him. He smiled, just waved back before I heard the sound of flesh tearing. I cried out and woke up. It was two in the morning, but that didn't matter anymore. I checked our chat and saw his last message. Tears welled up in my eyes as I stood up from my bed, frantically. I looked for his number in my phone before dialing. He didn't pick up. I tried again, but no response. Suddenly, I see a text. It was from my mother. Honey, are you home? Why aren't you picking up your phone? Mom, Gilbert isn't picking up my phone. Mom, what's happening? What happened to him? Did you check his blog? He posted an article in the evening. What? He said he won't. Your name isn't mentioned anywhere, but I think they got him. You stay where you are. I'll be home right away. Mom, I knew Edgar, didn't I? Honey, calm down. Nothing will happen to you. He saved me, didn't he? From the man who was harassing you? He tried to kill me, didn't he? And that boy saved me? Claire, it will be okay. You will be okay. I promise nothing will happen to you. They died because of me, Mom. I killed them. Please come back home, Mom. Just 10 minutes. I'll be there in 10 minutes. But my anxiety never settled down. I kept trying Gilbert's number, sobbing and choking. But a part in me knew it was too late. I fell to my knees, my body cold and shivering from the dread. The sound of tires screeching in front of our house only confirmed my speculation. It was too late now.